when you talk about working to address climate change, in what ways do you see government and business working together? Well, look, we're all on this fragile planet Earth together, and the only way out of this to protect this planet for future generations is more aggressive government involvement, more aggressive private sector involvement. Um, we all hold the key to this. What I keep in mind and why I stay working as a politician, um, you've got to have optimism. If you look at some of the data, uh, you know, we're at a tipping point if we hit a, an increase of two degrees Celsius in the next 12 years. We're already halfway there. Some say we can't even get to two, it has to be 1.5. Um, but it's human caused, so the solution, there's a human solution. Nature's not gonna solve it for us. We've created it through the production of carbon that science has proven. And 194 nations have agreed, except for the leader of the most powerful, wealthiest, greatest polluting nation in the world, that we're the cause of it and we have to be the solution. We in California, Senate Bill 100, uh, you can do what's smart for the environment and good for the economy. We've created 500,000 jobs in California in renewable energy. The closure of Diablo Canyon, as much as we would like to think it's a response to people who feared the threat of nuclear contamination or nuclear accident, it was a business decision. It's costly to produce nuclear energy in the 24-7 security, the security they're gonna maintain there after the reactors stop. It's gonna be for 30, 40, as long as the waste is there, there's gonna be a cost. Now on the open market, you can buy renewable, clean, safe energy for less. So as business people, PG&E says, why pay for that when we can pay for this? So you can do what's right for the environment and good for the economy. Uh, there's an initiative now in Congress, the new Green Deal, uh, led by the new Congresswoman Ocasio uh, Cortez, um, uh, do I have that right, from New York? Uh, Corcio? Ocasio Cortez, mil gracias. Um, she's the leader of trying to get a new Green Deal in front of Congress. Most people believe that while our cap and trade program, we take that investment and we put it into communities to protect them from the impacts uh, of carbon and to create jobs. That money's invested in, in carbon reducing programs from agriculture, but many on the planet believe the real solution is a carbon tax. And that the way you get to reduced carbon and eliminating carbon uh, production is by taxing it and prioritizing and incentivizing safe clean energy. But it's the greatest public health risk of our times, and uh, it's united people around the world. These, these communities in the South Pacific already facing seawater rise. We have study commissions in California looking at the impact of seawater rise. What's it gonna do to our tourism industry when housing and hotel properties are under six inches of water? It's coming. It's not, it's not wild guesswork, it's science. So we need to prioritize and create a higher sense of urgency. It's local government's problem, it's county government's problem, it's state government, it's federal, it's private sector, it's businesses, and you know each person can do something. I have a constituent, um, she's a junior in high school Girl Scout who for her merit badge initiated a no straw November, no plastic straw use in November. She, one young woman started that. She became a junior ocean pioneer at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Now Alaska Airlines and Delta have stopped using plastic straws. The city of Carmel, traditionally conservative city council, voted unanimously to ban plastic straws. There's exceptions for people with disabilities. but. People say, well, straws, that does, how does that make a difference? Everything we do makes a difference, and that's a vehicle to educate, and it's linked 
to climate change, the production of plastic, which is made from fossil fuel. And you, and you referenced a little bit earlier the um, jobs in renewable energy, in the renewable energy field. Um, is that, is, are there more examples of how government and, and private sector can work together? And do you, any, anything else that you see on the horizon that through policy yeah. or funding? Probably the best example of government private sector partnership in solar has been the federal government extending tax credits to people that install solar. Um, you can It's a direct credit off your mm -hmm. income tax. The current administration is threatening to take that away in its quest to restore um, coal mining as the primary energy source in our country. They're light years behind the reality that we face. Um, it makes sense for government to incentivize, whether it's a private homeowner or a business that takes steps, whether it's installing solar, more efficient water use, waste use, uh, recharging our water, all of those things, government, I think, has a role to play to incentivize that. Tax credits are the most logical way to do it. Um, and there's other ways in education, adapting our community college curriculum and higher education curriculum in high school to train people for the jobs that will help save our planet and to give people a sense of stewardship and pride in doing those jobs. It's not just you're doing this thankless, hard labor, installing solar panels on the roof. We need leadership in this country that extols the virtue of doing that work. It's like becoming part of a national peace corps or a domestic um, mm -hmm. environmental corps. You know, Canada gives people the option of doing military service, environmental service, or human services. Um, that service is mandatory, but it doesn't mandate military service. You can do it through environmental work or human services work. I think that would be a good model for the United States to embrace. The problem with our culture, it's so provincial. You turn on the TV, it's a mirror of the craziness in our own communities. We don't do enough to learn from our partners around the world who are having success. Traffic control in, in, uh, in Bogota, Colombia, for example. Mm -hmm. They've reduced their carbon footprint simply by organizing traffic flow so cars aren't idling as much at stop signs and you don't have as much congestion. Why, why aren't we doing that? Yeah, water conservation and production right. in Israel. Right. Yeah. Yeah.